My name is Matthew and today we're in Silsden, just in the background and we're going up to the Dubbler Stones. The two pretty interesting shaped stones, they look a bit like mushrooms and it's quite interesting how they've been formed over many years. So let's get up there and go have a look. I had to come back through here because I didn't look at the route. We're supposed to go over there. Oh dear. Oh no, <laughs> bloody hell. So just behind that tree, you can see where we're heading. So we've got a bit of a climb to come. We soon came across an assortment of farm animals before heading out of the farm and into a field. A field which would turn out to be very troublesome. Remember this beck as it was a pivotal point in the navigation of this walk. So we're taking a tiny detour, we've had to climb over this little gate because we saw a waterfall down here. There is supposed to be a little waterfall on the walk. I'm not sure if it's this but I don't really want to take any chances. The way down to this waterfall wasn't easy going. Stream crossings and slippy mud. But this was nothing compared to the upcoming obstacles. So we've made it to this little waterfall. We've just got to make it round this big holly bush so we can get to the slightly bigger one. This meant we had to go back up the slippy, muddy hill. We've created a task here, we really have created a task in half. And when you go up, it's not long before you must come back down. Asking to fall, I'm just to fall. Is this too silly actually? The answer to that is yes, it is too silly. We soon found a slightly less dangerous, but still not an easy route down. Well, that's not very strong, is that? That moldy wood. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the hidden waterfall was in sight, albeit obscured by the trees, which could only mean one thing. So that means going up and back down again. I don't know how I'm going to get up here. I'm coming out to be stuck. <laughs> Eventually, we arrived at the foot of the waterfall. That was not easy. This whole ordeal had taken over 20 minutes, which wasn't a problem, but unknown to me and Adam, we had missed our turning and we're now heading in the wrong direction. So we just came up from the bottom of this field, up to there, thinking that was where we were going. Turns out we need to be at that farm there and we should be on the bottom of the field, walk along, drop down and then climb up to the farm. After a slight navigational mishap, we were back heading in the right direction. Or so we thought. All this getting lost is hungry work, so I'm going to have a quick chocolate twist. Mm. That is good. As we dropped down to walk along the perimeter of the field, we noticed another waterfall just a short distance away. In typical up to summit style, we had to take a detour to see this. So we're going to have a little wander down here, quickly the operative word because we are in a rush. At least this time a gentle descending path took us down to the fall so no more sliding down hills. But this is actually quite interesting. That nice bridge there, I'm not sure what that was used for because it's not that wide unless it was some sort of old railway line. Pretty cool little spot. Little drop there. We got it all gushing down here. That's a good path just going up there with that little cliff edge. There you go, that's another waterfall, or little waterfall. But that's that same fall, but just from the other side. Right, now let's actually try to get back on track. After consulting the map, I came to a conclusion. I'm gonna be honest, we are pretty lost right now. I've given up with the route. I can't be bothered reading it because it's just the same thing. Head across this field to this style. I don't know what field we're in at this point. There's infinite fields and I'm not sure which one we're in. After quickly checking out this water feature, we swiftly headed out of the woods in search of our route, where I discovered how it had all gone so wrong. I think I've realized the error of my ways. Because when it said cross the beck, I didn't realize when we crossed the beck, before we even started heading down these fields, I didn't realize. After crossing the beck, we should have continued straight ahead, but we turned right, so now we had to retrace our steps all the way back. But let's get going. If you look closely, pan up there, Adam. That little gap in the wall, that is our correct route, the route we should be on. Eventually we made it back, but that was a hell of a detour. An hour plus, probably. It felt good to be back on route. Maybe our luck was finally taking a turn for the best. So much so, I decided to try my luck with the sun. Come this way. Over here. Maybe. 
Maybe. This strange section had me questioning my navigation again. It felt like we were literally walking through someone's garden. But after crossing a few more fields, we reached a stile that would take us onto open moorland. So it was time to pick up the pace to claw back the lost time to avoid walking back in the darkness. However, it wasn't long, about five minutes to be exact, before our pace was brought to a near standstill. Oh my God, I'm getting like stuck in it. Is it out of my car, get out, I don't think. Oh. oh my God, look how deep it is. Over there looks fine though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look like Australia. I know it is a bit of an Australia kind of energy, but this is definitely not, this is British, as British as you can get. Already well behind oh. schedule, we were left with only one choice. Usually, I would not condone leaving the footpath and coming onto potentially private land and climbing over a dry stone wall, but that is absolutely ridiculous. And this also looks so inviting. Look how dry this is. The cows have ruined that field, but this is just like a little, a little nature wonderland. This woodland felt special. Maybe it was the unique trees or the grassy floor, which is uncommon in a woodland. Or maybe it was just knowing that we probably weren't supposed to be there. But we best probably head back over towards the walls, much so we're having a great time in here. So we've just made it back onto the actual path. Sorry to keep everyone waiting for so long. I know you clicked to see these stones and we're still not there, but let's get to them now. Right, so I know I said we were gonna to get to the stones next, but the stones are just over there, I'm pretty sure. But we found this perfect bench with a lovely view, so we're going to stop off and have some lunch. So we went to Morrison's before and I found this. It was reduced to £1.97 and I do love a good yellow sticker. Assorted meats and look, it's just a load of meat. <laughs> How cool is that? I don't even know what that is. What is that? <laughs> Unbeknown to me, I'm pretty sure that was an ox tongue. I don't know what that is. That's a bit of a funny taste to it. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. That's pork, I think, for bacon. What an interesting purchase. After overstuffing myself with an abnormally large quantity of assorted meats, it was time to set off. Our next stop would be the Dubbler Stones, finally. So if you look in the distance, do you see something that looks a bit like a mushroom? Because I do. And that means we're finally at the Dubbler Stones. Quite big, aren't they? So these rocks are thousands, even millions of years old. And they've been carved by the wind, the rain, ice over millions of years. And the reason they've got this unique shape is because on top, you've got millstone, which is slightly harder. So it's more difficult for the wind to erode that. Whereas the bottom is sandstone. So that erodes quicker, which creates this really unique mushroom shape. Really interesting. These rocks are very uniquely shaped, but if you know of any rocks of a similar shape, comment down below. Cool. Here's the other one. This is, I think that one's a bit better. This one still has the mushroom effect, but it's just not quite as good as that other one. We had a quick clamber up the rocks before heading for a woodland waterfall that lies in the valley below. So I've yet again had another navigational error. It is not going my way today. We're supposed to be just over to the right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to pick up the stream down here and follow the stream upstream. Hopefully it doesn't take us too long because I don't really think there's a path there. We've had to climb this fence because we've got no other option other than turning around and that is not happening. But we found this pretty cool little stream. With darkness quickly rolling in, time was of the essence. But I had to make time to see several waterfalls that seemingly got more impressive the further downstream we ventured. That's a pretty cool one. Quite a lot of water coming down it as well. This is a bit of an adventure and I do like an adventure. The kind of sense of something going wrong. Well, it has gone wrong, we've got lost. But look at this. That is quite deep in there. There we go. This is the kind of event that makes it exciting. There's another waterfall there. Maybe another one there. You can't see it the best, but that's probably the best one of the day. That one's probably six, seven foot tall. But then we came across an obstacle. Well, this is our worst nightmare. We've come across a fence. Well, I can't jump that. You might be able to jump it. And I just wonder if that footpath there is our actual route. Yeah, so this lock probably means we weren't supposed to be coming across here. But I feel like when you're lost, it's kind of acceptable. Because like, what else are you supposed to do? Like, you're lost. We thought we were going the right way. Well, I didn't really. I could have turned around, but 
he wants to turn around and walk back uphill. But we've made it back to the track, the main path that we should be on. There you go, best one of the day. I don't know how tall that is, 15 foot. That is a fair bit of water coming down that though. This was the best waterfall so far. As we followed the river downstream, the falls didn't stop. Seeing this little waterfall, I guess, going into that pool. And there's also a little fall coming down there. That's quite a big one, is that? That's a good 20 feet at least. So there's yet another waterfall down there. Maybe bigger than the other one, I'm not sure. But that is an impressive waterfall. Yeah, so that's how big it is compared to Adam. A decent size. The faint pinky orange hue in the clouds was a sharp reminder that it wasn't going to be long before it was going to be completely dark. We can't go see any more waterfalls. There is still a lot of white water gushing down there though, but we can't go see any more. And I think we've probably seen the best of them. We've still a bit of a walk to go, to be honest. So we best get moving. So yeah, you can see it's definitely starting to get a bit dark now. Silsden is just them houses over there. As if the walk hadn't thrown enough at us, we had a heated encounter with some overly protective residents of the field. After my best attempt hey. to scare the sheep failed, the they began to come for us. <laughs> what are you doing? Try and loop round, loop round! <laughs> <laughs> then, as quickly as the altercation began, it suddenly ended like nothing had ever happened. Wow, that's some aggressive sheep, aren't they? So it's pretty dark now, or it's definitely getting there. We're just walking through Silsden Golf Course. I'm pretty sure it's abandoned. And then we're nearly back to the car. As you can see, our race against the darkness was an unquestionable loss. But we didn't feel defeated. We had seen many waterfalls enjoyed lunch with a view and climbed on some of the most unique rocks i've ever seen that's it for this video if you enjoyed please leave a like and drop a sub and if you want to watch me hike up the lesser known brother of the mountain wernside click the screen now